So in this video, let's talk about how we would draw the lower structure of SOCl2. A uh, pretty interesting molecule, but again, what I'm going to start with is write my structures down or my atoms down and the quantity. So in this case, I have one sulfur atom, I have one oxygen, but I have two chlorine atoms. And the idea is I'm going to find out from my PR table how many, how much valence electrons does each of these atoms have. Now, I've made several videos can, uh, with respect to the number of valence electrons, um, to how to get that from the PR table. Um, so at this point, if you feel like you need a review, you could go ahead and view those videos on the channel. But essentially from the PR table, we know that sulfur has six valence electrons. We also know that oxygen also has six valence electrons because, right, sulfur is oxygen's cousin. Now, chlorine is actually a halogen and it has seven valence electrons. So the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to count the total number of electrons that I have to place. Now, because I have two chlorine atoms, I have, and each chlorine atom worth is worth seven valence electrons a pair, then I must multiply the two times the seven to get 14, right? So the total with respect to two chlorine atoms for my valence will be two times seven, which would be 14 electrons. If I add 14 to six, that gives me 20. And if I add six to six, um, I'm sorry, but if I add six to 20, I have a total of 26 electrons that I have to place. So usually the first atom or the atom furthest to the left in your molecular formula is typically uh, your central atom. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place my sulfur there. At this point, I know it's surrounded by two chlorine atoms and one oxygen atom. Now, because I have 26 electrons to play with, I'm going to start from the simplest part and actually form in a single bond. So I'm going to form a single bond between my, comp my, my atoms. Now I know that chlorine, the, the molecule is not charged, so chlorine shouldn't be of any exception here, meaning it has to satisfy the octet rule. Now sulfur, it can have an expanded octet, uh, but we usually explore those options after, um, or, or it's better to explore those options after you fulfill the terminal atoms. Now at this point, I have two, four, six electrons. So I've used only six electrons out of, the, out of the 26 that I have to place. Now, instead of forming a double bond to the chlorine, what I'm actually gonna do is to full or get chlorine's valence filled by using uh, lone pairs. Now, if I do this, this becomes two, four, six, eight. So this chlorine is satisfied. I could also do the same thing here at this chlorine to add three more pairs of lone pairs and this chlorine becomes satisfied. This becomes two, four, six, eight. So this chlorine is satisfied. This chlorine is satisfied. Now, what about the oxygen? What about the oxygen? Well, I know sulfur can either expand, have an expanded octet or it can be satisfied by the octet rule. So the idea is I'm gonna actually form a double bond between the oxygen and the reason why I didn't form a double bond between the chlorine, as you could imagine, is because chlorine's octet is already full. So at this point, I'm just filling in sulfur's octet. And the only way I could do this is to form a double bond between the oxygen because I have no other option between the chlorine. Now at this point, the oxygen only has two, four, only has four valence electrons around it. Now sulfur has two, four, six, eight. So sulfur right now is satisfied. So we can't really put any more electrons on the sulfur thus far, thus yet, right? We can't really do that. So what I'm gonna do is to fill these in a pair of lone pairs on the oxygen atom. So let's count the total number of electrons we've used thus far. This becomes two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. All right. So 
right now we're looking at 24 electrons. So essentially that means we're missing two electrons, right? So if I count again, just to make sure we're getting this right, this becomes 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So because oxygen's octet is full, chlorine's octet is full, and this chlorine's octet is full, there's no other place to put the other electrons apart than on the ox than the sul on the sulfur atom itself, right? That's the only other place I have to put the electrons, and so this becomes two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, and this is actually a plausible lower structure for the SOCl2 molecule, right? Notice that all my Chlorine's valence is filled with respect to the octet rule, and oxygen's octet is filled. Now, sulfur is one of those atoms that you shouldn't be surprised that it has an expanded octet. So don't be surprised in this case that we have 10 electrons total around the sulfur atom.